Welcome into the Dallas Cowboys report presented today by Aura, the all-in-one digital safety tool. If you haven't already, they are giving you a free 14-day trial at Aura.com slash chat sports. That link, by the way, will be in the comment section and in the description. Today is June 9th, a.k.a. 6-9, so everyone type 69 in the comment section. I want to see just how many people watching today's show can type 69 in the comment section because that is maturity at its finest here at the Dallas Cowboys Report. Bit of a juicy trade rumor slash idea here. Rich Eisen of the Rich Eisen Show said the Cowboys should trade for DK Metcalf right now. Of course, the background is that Metcalf is holding out from minicamp. He wants a new deal from the Seattle Seahawks. In general, I tend to believe there are one of two reasons why a player holds out of minicamp given the almost $100,000 fines. A, you think you are close to a deal and you want to get that deal finished up so you'll pay the short-term price to make more money long-term. Or B, you don't want to be there at all. Now, from a need perspective, I get why Rich Eisen has pitched this. You trade away Amari Cooper, and I am excited about the future and prospect of Jalen Tolbert long term. And I like CeeDee Lamb quite a bit. You make a real argument, DK Metcalf would be the best receiver on this football team, and you're also probably not going to have Michael Gallup in time for week one. If you want to build the best passing offense possible, Adding DK Metcalf certainly helps you achieve that particular goal. Didn't always have Russell Wilson last year, but for his career, talking about a guy who typically averages about 1,000 yards per season, offers a bunch of big plays, and almost 10 touchdowns per game. That's valuable. Now, the problem here is as follows. DK is going to be expensive, both in the trade, what it would cost to get, to, to get him, and what it would end up being from a, a contract perspective. A.J. Brown got $25 million after he was traded from the Titans to the Philadelphia Eagles. Cooper Cup, meanwhile, just got a big-time new contract as well. That's $26.17 million. And Amari Cooper is already making $20 million. All of those things really do begin to add up when it comes to what the Cowboys would actually be willing and prepared to do. Because of that, we should know by now what the likely outcomes are in terms of the wide receiver room. It is very expensive from the cost of a trade, probably around the A.J. Brown trade, right? A first and a third. And then he got paid a guy probably a minimum, what, $25 million per year? Damn. So be honest with me here in the comments section. What is the percent chance that Dallas trades for DK Metcalf, or you know what, any big name wide receiver, Debo Samuel, etc. Drop the percentage in the comment section that Dallas trades for DK or any big name wideout. Look, getting DK Metcalf would be awesome. That is a great, aggressive, all-in, borderline, if not full-fledged, Madden-style move. You got DK and Lamb, and then you have Gallup. You can bring Tolbert along a bit slower. That's awesome. Do we really think the Cowboys are going to that? They have all the money they could want to afford DK Metcalf. They've got the funds. They are choosing not to go that route. They want to have their books clean. They don't want to be aggressive right now. I would be shocked, shocked in a happy way if they went after any of the big name wideouts. Now, I know many of you aren't happy with the way Stephen Jones and Jerry Jones run things, and I that quite a bit so if you think that i would be a better dallas cowboys gm show it for me by liking today's video this video is also powered by aura they offer financial fraud protection identity theft protection and online and device security for you or up to five family members with their all-in-one digital safety tool help keep your information off of the web and your family's information as well Head over to Aura.com slash chat sports. That link, by the way, will be high up in the description and in the comments. It'll have a reply to the pinned comment as well today to start that free 14-day trial. You can cancel this, folks, at any time. It's all in one digital safety for the whole family at Aura.com slash chat sports. 
Let's talk Mike McCarthy. Now, this one is whoo -hoo, interesting. Uh, so PFF was trying to rank all the head coaches in the NFL, at least the ones who are returning as head coaches, so not the, the newbies there. They tried to go with an analytical mindset of trying to identify the talent level and also not based on wins, so adjust for like an average team. The route they tried to go was like, if you have a high-paid quarterback, you get dinged. If you have a young QB, you don't. It's like it, it, they basically viewed talent level as almost investment spent, which <sighs> it's not great. Uh, to be honest, I don't like the process beyond the top three, and the results really don't make sense in the nitty-gritty. Here are their top ten. Bill Belichick, John Harbaugh, Andy Reid. Okay, I get that. That's fair. Cliff Kingsbury at number four. Pete Carroll at five. Okay. Matt LaFleur, six. Kyle Shanahan, seven. Mike Vrabel, eight. Okay. Frank Reich at nine. And Mike McCarthy at number 10, which I found fascinating given some of the rather notable names who are ahead or behind of McCarthy. I don't think Cliff should be number four. Add like a one or a two in front of that number. But five notable guys behind McCarthy. The Super Bowl winner, Sean McVay. It's interesting. The runner-up, Zach Taylor, also way down there. Brandon Zillow, I know it's controversial. I want to put him on there. Mike Tomlin's 13, the guy who never has a sub-500 mark. Sean McDermott, Kevin Stefanski. I was... I think this, when your data says that Cliff Kingsbury is the number four coach in the NFL and Mike Tomlin is number 13, to be blunt, I think your data sucks. I think whatever process you used isn't a good one. Toss it in the trash, try something else. So I want to hear from you guys now. Where would you rank Mike McCarthy among all the NFL head coaches overall? So from one to 32. Where would you rank Mike? Let me know in the comment section. We rank the Cowboys Report number one among all Cowboys YouTube channels because that is what the data actually says. Most subscribers, most views, and I think most fun had as well. If you want free and daily Dallas Cowboys videos, hit that big red button right now. Back to more trade rumors here because, well, you know, I guess it's June. People got to write about stuff. Inside the Star has pitched the Cowboys should trade for Gardner Minshew. My first thought was, wait a minute, what year is it? The Cowboys had little interest in adding Minshew last year when he was traded for next to nothing from the Jags to Philadelphia. I will make this important note. Minshew, despite having the best hair among all NFL QBs, best facial hair, just the best vibe, maybe, is not nearly as highly regarded by the NFL as some fans and media view him. He is not that well regarded from a talent perspective and from a leadership perspective as well. There are some concerns on that front. We're going to go more in depth on the Minshew side of things here, but first, would you trade for Gardner Minshew? Why for yes and for no? Assuming it costs what about the Eagles give up for him, a mid to late day three pick, would you go get Gardner Minshew? Y for yes or N for no? Now, the conversation in part is, is he better than Cooper Rush? That's mainly the conversation, right? And Rush actually impressed in his lone start last year in a very surprising, shocking way. My biggest issue with Minshew is he is the ultimate one-game wonder. Now, this is a very small sample size split but it is startling the difference here. In his first start of the year, the two years with Jacksonville, one year with Philly, versus all of his other 24 games played, this is unbelievable. 87.1% completion rate in the first three starts of the year against 61.1. The yards per attempt go from 9.86, which is elite, by the way, to 6.71, which is pretty average to middling. 7-1 to one, touch and interception ratio against 34 versus 11. That is unbelievable. And the reality is I've basically picked his three best games. Beyond those three best games, eh, there's a reason why he's only a backup QB, despite the vibe he puts off there. Frankly, I'm not really that interested in adding Gardner Minshew. I just think he's a bit overhyped. 
to free agency now. How about signing Eric Ebron? As I'm sure everyone knows, Dalton Schultz is skipping OTAs and potentially minicamp amid a contract dispute. Now, into the star pitch day, one year, $5 million deal for Ebron, which, okay, uh, that's more on one free agent who was bad last year than the Cowboys paid all three of their outside guys almost combined. It's interesting there. But the Cowboys do have all the cap space right now. So name a player who you want to sign. Could be Ebron, could be somebody else all together. Name a player in the comments, of course, right now, who you want to go out and acquire. Now, Ebron in 2021 was banged up, didn't play very well. He's had some good years. 2018 was awesome, bordering on really good. Not that dissimilar from Dalton Schultz's production there. 2020 was also pretty solid. But I'll make note, uh, 56 grabs for 558 yards. Not the typically high average one, but not bad either. The Steelers went, oh, we got to get Pat Fryermuth. So if you want to sign Ebron to a cheap one-year deal, sure. Um, I don't think it makes any sense to sign Ebron and then like try to move on from Schultz because you can't cut Schultz. His deal is guaranteed. He's on your team. That is the reality here. But if you want a more proven vet backup, I do think Ebron is one of the better available guys out there at this point. I just wouldn't expect him to be anything more than a downgrade from Dalton Schultz. And maybe you let the young guys like Jake Ferguson go that route.